this bubble that people live in, and I think that for all of the time people joked, rolled their eyes, carried on, Scott Morrison punctured the Canberra bubble. The concept that um, their will, their editorial, their editorial placement, their story placement, the way they just twist it, the way they just, you know, oh, we framed this politician to make them look good, this one to look that bad. You know, literally during the campaign, when the conversation came out about, oh, does, should gay people, do gay people go to hell, the ABC had a photo of the Prime Minister speaking. He was just doing this. But they took it from down beneath to be shadowy, to look all very menacing. So all of those little games. But guess what? They don't run the world. Normal people vote on a million different things and the media is their input for information, but you can't tell them what to think. No, and they can see through a lot more than people give them credit. Correct. What was your sense, though, of, of that bubble and, the, and, and, and that fact that Morrison bursted? And also, today, in the plethora of shows that talk about elections, these people need to go back and say... Not how did I get it wrong, because nobody knows. Like, nobody knows. You've got a feeling, you've got an intuition, you've got information. Nobody knows. But none of them have turned around and said today, well, I have to reverse engineer how this happened and why it happened and what could I have done to be more open to the concept that in a two-horse race, both horses could, could win. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think about the, the lack of reflexivity, the lack of awareness that seems to be there immediately from the media who screwed this so badly? Well, there's a couple of things at play. One is that uh, journalists, as somebody pointed out to me once, even sports reporters tend to be herd animals. You know the old joke about the note from the editor? Your story's still exclusive. Please explain so you don't <laughs> dare vary. <laughs> and uh, as far as what people tell the pollsters, I was listening to a young lady today from uh, one of the poll uh, companies very much in denial. Oh, they're not too shy to say. Yes. Well, maybe they don't want to say. And, uh, you know, if you, you look at somebody as high profile, shall we say, as Israel Falou, and what it cost him to give his honest opinion. Why do you want to give your honest opinion to somebody who phones you up, you don't know from Adam, you know, maybe you don't want to do that. Well, but also, don't forget as well that, I mean, Gary, obviously, it's a secret ballot. The Electoral Commission knows that you turned up. They don't know who you voted for. When the pollster rings you, they've got your name and That's telephone right. number. That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly oh, look, right. absolutely, Paul, but uh, the, the workers of Australia decided that the self-important, self-declared important elites uh, just can't be trusted. And so every time a phone call came through, a pollster or somebody presuming to be a pollster was just seen to be part of that machine that was telling people what to do. So uh, it was two to the valley, as we say here in Queensland, you know, two fingers. Uh, and uh, people had their own vote and, and they were... They were satisfied to do it, and uh, and and more strength to them. And and, and I know that Scott Morrison is going to have to govern for a whole lot of first time for a long time, or first time ever, uh, Liberal voters who had always voted Labor in the past. But they weren't going to go around and tell everybody, mate. It was their own bloody business. Simple. I'm I'm uh, I think this is quite fascinating. This this pollster situation. I suspect I was talking to Michael uh, earlier. I'm I'm starting to to wonder whether it's a reaction by people to the whole of their life being data mined and every single aspect of their yep. world is being gathered up yep. and crunched for them. This is the one opportunity they have to take back control. And you know, to, as Gary said, two fingers to the valley. They're going to go. I'm going to keep this to myself. Thanks very much. It's the one part of my life that I don't have to tell anyone about. So stuff you, Jack. And I suspect it's it's. And, and I'd, I'd be surprised if Centrelink isn't flooded with pollsters uh, looking for work. Because <laughs> I wonder how relevant they are. Well, anymore. mate, the, 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 well, the Ipsos they, poll is a, yeah, is a disgrace. Yeah, skills, uh, news no. poll was way off. <laughs> and, and remember, they went into the election with basically the exact opposite of where this thing ended up uh, landing on 2PP primary and all the rest of it. Uh, we'll show you that while we talk. I think, there's, I think there's a couple of other points. One, there used to be a provision in the Electoral Act that said that if you conducted a poll, no matter who you were, included uh, newspaper organisations, you had to publish how much you spent and uh, details of the poll. Now, the Electoral Commission, and you heard me say again and again, they need a thorough investigation. Correct. They chose never to Absolutely. do anything about it. They chose not to enforce it. 
However, the provision remained there and there was a great deal of pressure and lobbying by the media to have it removed. It ultimately was. When it was removed, that's when polling took off like every fortnight. Mm. Because they weren't, they weren't prepared to push the envelope earlier, but once it was taken out of the Act, uh, in fact, this multiple polling and multiple players in it came in. And what they never put up in highlight is, is the degree of error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is about 2% either Paul, way. And I, I just Paul, think... Paul, no-one knows... Ha well, Gary, if, if I can just finish <laughs> it, on the point... I think people see all this information out there and they say, look, it's just not um, relevant to me. I'm not going to answer it and I'm just going to tell them what they think they want to hear. Mm. And, and, Paul, nobody really knows how many chickens were killed in the making of all these entrails that were just <laughs> pulled apart and created and looked at. And, I mean, in every junior cub reporter, in every newspaper around the country, and, look, you know, we've all been there, we've all done that, so I'm not disparaging anything else other than my own kind. We've all done that. But the preponderance of this, the, the, the pomposity of this, the self-importance of this just fed into this narrative of, you know what, there's only a couple of things that are private in my life, and one of them is my vote, the other one's my religion, the Labor Party picked on the Prime Minister's religion, and the Labor Party presumed that people who voted red in other elections, we're going to do it this time, no matter how bad this mob were. And the, their arrogance got the reward it deserved. Real simple. 